What are the actual differences between freezing and freeze-drying foods? Today we're going to talk about all the differences between freezing and freeze-drying and which one is better. Let's get going. Welcome to our homestead. Welcome inside of our solar room, which also doubles as our food storage room and food preservation room. First things first, obviously everybody is familiar with a freezer and all of us probably have one. Freezing is simply lowering the temperature of water in the fruit, vegetable, meat, or whatever product it is below 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees Celsius. And this helps to preserve the food for a longer period of time than fresh food. A freeze dryer, on the other hand, uses a process called sublimation. And it's complicated, but under low pressure, which this does, it will turn your water from a solid to a gas instantaneously. And since freeze-dried food is almost 100% completely dry, it keeps for a very long period of time, up to 30 years. Frozen foods like these peaches, for example, will only stay good for a maximum of about two years. The optimum time to eat these is about eight months after they're frozen. Now they are still safe to eat if they've been frozen for a longer period of time, but they might not be the best. We'll talk about that later. Let's talk about equipment and cost next. This is a normal chest freezer. I got it at Home Depot and it was around $210. But many people only have a freezer that's attached to their refrigerator. Now the cost of these is more because it's a complicated piece of equipment. And the small version of the Harvest Right brand freeze dryer is $2,400. You can find other brands out there on the market. However, they only sell them in bigger configurations, which are much more expensive. And if you want to venture onto a site like Alibaba to find one, good luck in the quality that you'll receive. It might not work at all. In terms of time for freezing things, it's really going to depend on your freezer, what setting you have it set at, how full it is. But normally to freeze something solid in a freezer, in a chest freezer like this, it takes roughly about 12 hours. But some can do it faster. For the freeze dryer, the process can take a minimum of about 17 hours. That's the fastest I've done it before. In a maximum of about 36 to maybe even 40 hours, depending on what you are freeze drying, say if it's like a soup, that will take a long period of time. But for these strawberries that I'm about to put in there, they should take the minimum amount of time. So let's talk about weight and size, because that's going to play a factor in how much food you are going to be able to store in your house. This is a bag of frozen tomatoes that I've had in the freezer since last season, and I do need to make sauce out of these, but they are heavy and they are the same size as when they were fresh. This is a bag of an entire pineapple, five bananas, and two mangoes, and they are all contained within this small pouch here. It is also light as a feather. So when it comes to size and weight difference, obviously freeze drying is the way to go. And this is also extremely important when you are trying to store foods. This lightweight package, which is extremely compact, is going to store really well in a lot of different places. Additionally, like we talked about earlier, it's going to store for up to 30 years. And the beautiful thing about freeze dried food is that it is portable. If you do not have space anymore in a certain closet for things like this, you can move it to another space in your home. If we're talking about frozen things like this, you can't move them. They must remain in the freezer in its location and it can't move. So it is limited also. For freeze dried foods, you can put boxes and boxes and boxes of these stacked up in the corners of rooms for an extended period of time, but you can only fit so many freezers in your house. Let me show you a challenge in terms of equipment as well. So let's take the freezer for example. Inside this freezer, you can see all these ice crystals forming around the edge. And that's because this freezer is pulling in moisture from the air. It is not completely airtight. So it's pulling in that moisture from the air and it's freezing around the inside. And you can see that that's extremely exaggerated in this old freezer that I have on these shelves. It's really starting to build up a lot of ice. So I'm going to need to remove everything from here and completely defrost it. This happens about once every six months or so. The only thing that you have to do with a freeze dryer is change the oil in the pump. Now I have not done 30 cycles yet with this Premier pump with our Harvest Right freeze dryer. 
So I have not had to change the oil yet, but I'm getting close. And really besides a simple cleaning on the inside, that is the only maintenance you're going to have with one of these machines. So in terms of nutritional value, these strawberries that I'm going to freeze dry will retain 95 plus percent of all of their nutritional value. That's pretty amazing. But people don't know that the frozen strawberries will retain almost the same amount, actually a little bit higher, about 97% of their nutritional value. But there is a huge difference between the freeze-dried strawberries and the frozen strawberries, and here it is, you can probably see it. Now that is freezer burn, and this is an extremely bad example of it, and it's partially my fault. Every frozen food is gonna develop freezer burn on it, no matter how it's packaged. But some will last much longer than others. And here's an example of that. These zucchini that I packaged in the past, I did two things to them to help preserve them longer being frozen. One of them is obvious, it's vacuum packed. So that's gonna pull the air out of it and prevent oxidation. Oxidation can still happen in a freezing environment and that's what leads to freeze burn. But also these zucchini were blanched before they were vacuum sealed. What blanching does is reduce the amount of enzymes that are in the zucchini surface and it helps prevent them from going bad quickly. If you haven't seen my video on how to do this, click on the video link at the top of the screen. So when something gets horribly freezer burnt, like these older strawberries, it is because air is present. Freezer burn is dehydration of your product, like these strawberries, and oxidation in a freezing environment. And although the food is still safe to eat, it tastes horrible. All of us know that. If you've ever had anything that's freezer burnt and tried to cook it, it is completely, almost inedible. It will give you a lot of nutritional value, but it's not gonna be good at all. On top of that, all fruits and vegetables that you put in the freezer will have breakdown of their cell walls. Those cell walls burst when they are frozen solid. So when you unthought things like this, they are gonna be complete mush. So if that's okay, if you're just making a sauce like the tomatoes, we always freeze those, that's completely fine. But if you want something that you put in the freezer to come out the same way, that's not gonna happen. So with the freeze drying process, all of that is going to be eliminated. You're not gonna to have to worry about any of that at all. The taste of freeze dried products is almost identical, if not completely identical and hard to discern from fresh food. So despite the big cost difference between the two things, I highly recommend using the freeze dryer to preserve your foods, not only for the preservation of the nutritional value, but also because you can store it in a lot of different places and you're not going to get things like freezer burn. I also did a video on how much it costs to freeze dry your own foods as opposed to buying freeze dry foods, and this is much more economical. And as a reminder, we do have a link below the video in the description for Harvest Right if you wanna check out one of these. So now I'm gonna freeze dry my strawberries. I've just turned the machine on, and we are going to hit start. It's gonna to start to pre-cool, and in about 15 minutes, give or take, I'm going to put my strawberries in the freeze dryer. Then tomorrow afternoon, probably around the same time, we will have our freeze dried strawberries. And unfortunately, I'm gonna throw these old ones away because they're just not good anymore. 15 minute cool down, it's ready to load up. Hit continue, it's gonna to continue to freeze down to that low temperature that I told you, and then I'll show you what they look like tomorrow. It's the next day, we're back, the batch is finished. Let me show you what they look like. So what I'm gonna do is open the vent. That's gonna depressurize the inside so I can actually open the door and get them out. There we go, and we have to package these up quickly so that they don't absorb any moisture from the surrounding air. So these are just like styrofoam. They are so light, they're light as a feather. They have zero water left in them. Let me bite into one of these on camera next to the microphone so you can hear what these sound like. That flavor is so intense, it's concentrated. Wow, it's just a hit of sweet, sour. They're pretty awesome. I'm not gonna show you the packaging process today because we already did a video on that. Click on the link at the top of the screen to see the absolute best process to package and save your freeze-dried food. And also head below the video to the description which lists all of the products that we recommend here on our homestead.
and click on this video right here, which shows you the setup process for a Harvest Right freeze dryer. Have a beautiful, blessed day. We'll see you next time. Bye.